Hi, this is Adam Newman, Managing Partner and Senior Wealth Advisor at Bernie Wealth Management. And I'm joined here today by Andy Pratt, one of our senior partners and our Director of Investment Strategy. And this is Bite Size Retirement, where we take common retirement planning topics and break them down into five minute bite size pieces. These videos are not investment or tax advice, but hopefully remove some of the mystery and give you a solid foundation to plan off of. Now, remember, while we might be taking five minutes to explain these topics, definitely do not take five minutes to make any of these important financial decisions. So today we're going to be talking about bear markets, which is incredibly timely given what's been happening so far in, uh, in 2022. And we're specifically going to be emphasizing what to do and what not to do during these bear markets. But I thought, Andy, it would be really helpful if you could just kick us off and first define for everyone what exactly a bear market is. Yeah, I think we all associate and know bear market equals bad. Um, but let's get some definitions on the table so we can kind of have a shared understanding of where we are. So first, you know, the technical definition of a bear market is a 20% drawdown in stocks. Uh, but keep in mind, as we learned this year in 2022, when we're recording this, this webinar, um, bear markets can happen in other asset classes too. So bonds are also down double digits. You know, that would definitely meet the definition of a bear market in bonds. Um, so it could happen elsewhere. But we do tend to focus on stocks because that's where it happens most often. And the fact of the matter is you can expect to have a bear market occur about once every five years, looking back historically at the U.S. stock market performance. And you know, the thing is, we never know what causes the bear market. It's extremely difficult to predict what's going to be the trigger for it. Um, but we should set ourselves up with the expectation that they do and will occur. You know, let's say you you retire at 65, you can expect to have multiple bear markets during the course of your retirement. So it's important to know how to handle them. Um, you know, some 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 other statistics around bear markets is you know we know that that 20 is the is the floor, um, but the average bear market resulted in about a 33 percent loss. Um, it typically takes about 12 months to go from a peak to a trough in a bear market, and then another 21 months to recover fully. Uh, but keep in mind, those are the average numbers, not, you know, no two bear markets are ever the same. In fact, the most two recent ones are on opposite ends of the spectrum with the great financial crisis lasting much longer, being much more severe, and the 2020, um, you know, COVID crash happening in, you know, lightning fast speed. So now that we've got some information, you know, about bear markets, Adam, and, and we know to expect them. So the spare market's going to happen in retirement. What should I do? Well, I think the first thing you want to do is just acknowledge that bear markets are uncomfortable for everybody. You know, very few people get excited when we hit a bear market. And especially if it's in or around the time you've either recently retired or just about to retire, you know, bear markets can be especially uncomfortable. So just understand that a lot of people are feeling the same way that you are and, and, uh, and think about how you can translate a bear market into taking positive action that'll put you in a better position long term. So there's a couple of things that are really important to emphasize. One being, you know, it's okay to make an investment allocation change during a bear market. You know, it's not uncommon that, you know, you, let's say, are very heavy in stocks in your portfolio. Things have been going well for several years. So you haven't really had to think about risk and then the market sells off and now you're realizing your anxiety is through the roof. You probably were more aggressively invested than you ever should have been. Um, and so it's this game of chicken with the market. You know, should I make a change now? Should I wait for it to recover? It's OK. And uh, we actually encourage, you know, don't worry about where we are in a market cycle. If you feel like it's the right time to make an allocation adjustment to better fit your overall situation, um, don't be afraid to do it, even in a bear market. You know, number two, for those that have some sort of an asset allocation already, you know, some mix of stocks, bonds, or other asset classes, you know, within a bear market, what happens is investments start to perform very differently from one another. So someone who might have had a target investment allocation of 70% stock, 30% bonds, if stocks sell off substantially, that's not what your portfolio looks like anymore. Your stock allocation is probably a lot lower. Your bond allocation is probably a lot higher. So use the bear market as a way to say, you know what? I'm I'm really light on stocks now because they've declined. I'm going to sell some of my assets that have gone up a bit or in value or have stayed flat. And now I'm going to buy stocks to get back to our target. Oh, and by the way, I'm doing that at a much lower price point now. So you're 
they're somewhat strategically, uh, you know, making a uh, a portfolio decision to take advantage of what the bear market has provided to you, but it's not day trading, it's not market timing. You're literally just getting back to where you were supposed to be, but doing it in a in a in a way that's going to benefit you um, long term. And finally, you know, think of what types of planning strategies might be available to uh, initiate during a market downturn. For example, if you had planned to convert money from pre-tax to Roth at some point during the year, you know, when the market sells off, that's a great time to consider it because you can move more assets into Roth at a lower price point and capitalize on that tax-free growth in the future. Uh, we did a previous bite size retirement video on Roth conversion specifically, so I encourage you to check that out. Um, and then some other tax strategies like tax loss harvesting, um, you know, other tax planning techniques are things that you know are part of your overall financial plan and are attached directly to your goals and your values that you know sometimes might make more sense to either front load or initiate during a bear market. So it's a great time to have a conversation with your advisor. You know, bear markets, we've got a little checklist that we work off of with our clients to try and, uh, you know, take advantage, you know, use what's happening in the markets to our advantage and not see it purely as a negative and anxiety ridden uh, event. So that's kind of what we think of in terms of what you should be thinking and what you should do. But how about what you should not do, Andy? Yeah, I mean, bear markets do represent plenty of opportunities to actually take control and take advantage of them, but they also present opportunities to shoot yourself in the foot when it comes to your investments. And, you know, I think from our perspective, the number one thing not to do is do not panic sell. You know, as you mentioned, you don't need to go from 100% in to 100% out. Um, and in fact, you know, that's the that's the number one way to ensure that you know, your retirement plan is not there for you at the end. Um, if, if you're going to cash whenever a bear market does happen, you know, keep in mind that if you do try to market time, you ultimately have to be right twice. You have to be right when the market's selling off and to avoid some of the downturn, but then you also have to be right getting back into the market. And in our experience, you know, people struggle with the timing on both ends of that. They really struggle on when to get back in. And they oftentimes are buying in at higher prices than when they sold and end up losing out on returns as a result. Remember, you know, whenever there's volatility, you have the biggest down days, but you also have the biggest up days. And it's really important to be in the market when those up days do occur. So that's, you know, from a from a portfolio sense, that's something certainly not to do. Uh, but from a behavioral sense, you know, it's totally okay to feel anxious. Um, and in fact, you know, most of us do retirement planning and do our asset allocation um, when we are in what's called a cold state. You know, we're, be, we're able to think clearly, you know, if it's a normal market environment, you know, we're making sound decisions. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, you know, we're planning for something that you can only really experience once it gets there. And that's when the market does sell off. You know, now we're in a hot state, we're anxious, we're stressed, might be a little depressed. And there have been researchers who have actually given investors IQ tests both before and during a big market sell-off, and they do worse during the sell-off. That means that they are actually scoring as dumber in the sell-off than they were uh, when they were making their plan. So, you know, understand that you are dumber and trust your smarter self, okay? And then like the last it. thing that, you know, I think is going to sound like almost irresponsible advice is it's okay not to peek at your portfolio. It's okay to take the ostrich method here. And, you know, assuming that your portfolio is adequately diversified, assuming that it made sense, uh, you went through a planning exercises and you set the asset allocation that's right for you and right for your goals. Um, and especially if you have an advisor whose job it is to oversee your portfolio and do all of the things that Adam was suggesting that you do, um, it's okay to forget your password for a little while and not peek on your investments. Remember, you know, we are all as humans uh, hardwired to feel the pain from losses about twice as much as we enjoy the gains. Um, so that's something that you have to keep in mind. So that was our video today about what to do and what not to do in a bear market. Uh, please leave a comment below if you have any retirement questions you want answered. You know, for Adam, we thank you for joining us today. And please check out the rest of the videos in our bite-sized retirement series. Thank you.